using biometrics. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Andrew. Thank you for joining me today. This is the DeVilvis Capital Allocators channel. We are a private group of investors investing on the cutting edge. Today, I want to talk about DeFi. You know, we have been heavy on DeFi over the last few months, right? Even since I started this YouTube, YouTube channel, that's all I've been really talking about is the DeFi building out on the XRP ledger. And why is that? Well, because it's a brand new ecosystem and this ecosystem is dedicated to institutional DeFi, right? And so what does institutional DeFi mean? It means large players engaging in the automated market maker liquidity pools on the XRP ledger. It will increase the total value locked over the long run. I'm expecting that Ripple's partners from the early years are going to be engaging in DeFi as they have already, you know, been prepped and ready to do this for some years now. We've just needed the clarity. We need the lawsuit over. We need regulations. And the blockchain itself needs to have all the requirements for institutions to legally engage in DeFi. So we're almost there. The lending protocol is being, uh, you know, put forth now. Uh, we just got the market maker. So all this is brand spanking new in the community. Uh, you know, we've been heavy in on this MAG XRP pair. Uh, why MAG, right? Um, I'll tell you what I love about MAG and some things that are uh, caution flags to me about MAG. Maybe we'll see that get cleared up in the future. But for now, a few of those caution flags remain. This is a bit of a yellow flag day. Um, but, you know, I'm a farmer. Uh, I have a long term vision for my DeFi portfolio. I plan on it being my main source of income. Uh, so, um, you know, just putting that out there, I'll tell you a few of the good things I think about MAG right now. So MAG, 84% APY today because it had a bit of a price drop yesterday, but you can see the price is starting to pick back up now. Um, the yield is paying out much more. It's up by 30% on the yield. And, uh, you know, the way the XRP ledgers market makers work, uh, as we go down in price, the uh, trading mechanism is churning out profits for the liquidity providers. And so, you know, as we go down, we're making profit. As we level back out, we're much more in the profit. And as it goes back up, we're even more in the profit. Not to mention the MAG token is a governance token on the Magnetic Exchange. Uh, the Magnetic Exchange is a platform built on top of the XRP ledger. So your funds are not at the Magnetic Exchange. They are on a liquidity pool on the XRP ledger. That's important to understand that. Now, you know, obviously the bullish case here is the XRP ledger has a fantastic uh, AMM mechanism. The functionality of the AMM on the XRP ledger is bar none. Uh, it's next level. You know, we're seeing people as we talk depositing XRP into this pool. We just got another 2.5 XRP a few seconds ago. Um, so really, what are the uh, caution flags I mentioned? Well, and they're not that big. Um, I think it's just because, you know, this is still new. Magnetic has been building this out for a little bit over two years now. And, uh, you know, they are they are very, very consistent on Twitter X um, and they're, you know, updating. They're improving the platform. Great to see all that. Great. Uh, they are constantly replying to comments. Um, they're trying to help. Right. They have a a telegram where they're answering questions as well. They're performing regular maintenance on the um, on the platform itself. You know, they've put a lot of work into this platform now. That doesn't exclude them from, you know, a proper vetting process. You should do your due diligence, weigh your personal risk assessment when it comes to DeFi, right? I've weighed all this out. I've done everything, right? And, you know, I even looked when I was entering into the pool yesterday as it was pumping up a ridiculous amount of pump, right? Um, you know, we were getting, I was up, you know, a lot. Um, but I only expected uh, really and truthfully to get into this pool to make the passive income on the trading of MAG and XRP. And that is happening uh, regardless of the price. And so, you know, as a farmer, you don't just plant a seed one day and expect it to sprout the next 
and uh, you know harvest the next day. This is a long term vision. This is something I will be you know really studying, really putting in my due diligence on understanding when to enter into these pools, when to shave a little bit off the top. You know, there's a multiple strategies for this, right? And the cool thing about MAG is, is that it is a utility token for the decks, right? It is their utility token. When you own MAG, you get voting rights on the on their uh, on their platform, and uh, a lot of it gets burned. It is very, very, very finite, right? And what that means is there's only 2,500 DAG. 12.5 percent of that is with the core team. 12.5 percent of that is being burned. And the other half is being rewarded out to liquidity providers as we continue on uh, trading in the pool. Now, um, you know, so that, you know, 25, 2,500 tokens uh, with a really big burn rate uh, just means that this thing is designed for pumponomics, right? But Here's where it gets interesting. The magnetic team, um, you know, if they decide if they have, you know, really been here to build brand in the XRP Ledger community, build trust with the XRP Ledger community, then they are here for the long run. And I think they are because they've been here for over two years. I scrolled deep through their Twitter, looked at all their, uh, you know, tweets and replies. And I saw, you know, months back, even when the DDoS attack was happening on the XRP Ledger, you know, there was you know, a lot of transactions, a lot of really minuscule uh, for nothing transactions. Basically, it was a DDoS attack um, that has since settled down. Uh, you know, they were fully aware of that. Um, they were, you know, uh, talking with Ripple employees about possible solutions, things like that. So they're showing to me, right? That, and that's why I said a caution flag, right? A yellow flag, not a red flag, a yellow flag. And uh, it just means to be cautious. And that's why I posted earlier on my Twitter I uh, tagged Magnetic, I tagged Everburn token, another uh, token, farming token on the XRP Ledger. And I told them, look, you know, they have to understand that the XRP Ledger community has a lot of trauma kind of embedded into their, uh, you know, into their portfolio because of the of what the XRP Ledger community has had to endure for so long. DeFi is brand new to us. It's it, it's it's uh, literally brand new now. I started DeFi, you know, over a year ago in the Avalanche uh, network on Ethereum, just trying to understand DeFi because I knew the day for XRP was coming. And my real strategy was, you know, if I'll hold it as a blue chip long term strategy, I should feel comfortable to engage in the DeFi on that ecosystem. Right. I'm in DeFi on Algorand, DeFi on Hedera, uh, about to enter DeFi and Stellar, they have some really amazing things going on there. But my favorite closest to my heart is XRP Ledger. And that's why I'm really focused on the XRP Ledger's DeFi ecosystem. I really think that it is up next and it is being placed right from the Axelar partnerships, from Corium, from the Flare networks, from all the stuff surrounding the XRP Ledger. It is becoming a cross chain super DEX, right? So we need to get familiarized with the decks and that's what we're doing now that's why we're here on magnetic exchange now you know i would uh prefer they come out and like you know maybe just have a little podcast or something on their youtube maybe some face-to-face short-term content on their twitter other than that you know it's all green flags right um <clears throat> if the token was just straight pumponomics i really wouldn't uh you know be interested in it but because it has that governance rights uh, right. And because they're trying to build brand with Magnetic here, uh, I think the amount of money that I have in that pool, I'm OK. If it went to zero, it would be just another day to me. Uh, but I don't think it's going to go to zero. And uh, I'm willing to ride this out for the long term for the fees paid out, uh, because what I've learned through my study, also through the talk with Smoke yesterday, I interviewed Smoke Dog. Uh, you guys know him from X, really, really prominent member in the community, really deep researcher. And we realized, you know, uh, DeFi is kind of that uh, uh, that centerpiece that is attracting the institutions that is going to be their business models. And that is where the money is going to be. And the assets should follow the money, like David Schwartz said. So long story short, um, you know, weigh your risk. None of this is financial advice. You have to have a strategy. I'm going to show you guys that even before uh, the dip in price, right? This is the dip that happened overnight. Some people took some profits out of the pool and it's starting to wane off. 
before that happened, I updated the private community, right? Uh, the private focus group, the Vilvis Capital Allocators, and I made a magnetic video, and I'm going to show you um, that right here. And so here it is. Pattern. If it, if it hang on one second. Bounces around in this pattern. Like I said, worst case scenario, the bottom falls out. We come right back down and it starts to test this area where it consolidated originally. And then, you know, we could pro possibly, as soon as you start to do your due diligence on it, you see the tokenomics of it, right? The fact that it plays as a governance token as well gives it that last piece of solid foundation, right? I didn't want just to hold a token because it has pumponomics. Uh, but that last foundational piece that gives you the ability uh, to, you know, vote on the project is that last piece that I needed. So for now, we're going to hold. Uh, like I said, we need a plan for anything. Could continue on from here, gain all the hype, continue on going up. Uh, we're getting the fees paid. Uh, every day we're getting fees paid out and we're getting the increase in value of the mag token itself So this is amazing. Uh, like I said bears case comes down or you know We stay in this flag like pattern Until we come back out and slowly make our way and possibly flag out again up here uh, Or bottom falls out and we stay down here forever and you know but these guys have been building for years, so we need to just be ready for anything, right? Always be ready for any case scenario. When it comes to technical analysis, it's always three scenarios that could happen. It's either going to go up, sideways, or down. And we have all these scenarios ready to go for whatever happens. So, all right, guys, I will see you on the next. All right, so as you see there, um, Mag XRP Amen pool just getting started. Two thousand five hundred tokens. It bounces around. Sorry, uh, two thousand five hundred tokens for governance rights. Twelve point five percent will be burned, and uh, you know the magnetic team is showing that they are here for the long term. I don't see them going anywhere. However, uh, they should add an about us section to their site or do a podcast or become more personal with the community. That's my only concern. But I have weighed my risk factors and I'm ready for anything. And uh, you know that is my personal. Um, uh, strategy when it comes to the magnetic decks pool, right? I'm very long-term bullish on uh, XRP, Ledger, DeFi, uh, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about here today. Unlocking liquidity through interoperability, pathfinding, and routing through the decks. The XRPL is now a super DEX via the Axelar solution. You know, next I will be researching the root network, which I've already performed a lot of due diligence on that with the Futureverse projects, building out uh, on the XRP ecosystem, which is the gaming side for the XRPL ecosystem. Root Network uses XRP for gas fees. Let's listen to uh, Jazzy Cooper here. She's at the Stable Summit. Now, we've covered this video before, but it's very important to continuously understand what is the vision for the XRP ledger, the super decks, the, in the cross-chain interoperable super decks, right? We have to know. Any other comments? All right, we'll, we'll move on to the next set of questions. And um, can you uh, talk to us a bit about inter how interoperability contributes to unlocking liquidity uh, within the DA ecosystem? Sure, yeah, I, I can take that one. Uh, so if we think back to uh, the introduction of, of blockchain and the problem that it was really intending to, to solve, um, we, we can look, take a look at traditional finance and you have these clear silos ac across different financial institutions and uh, when open networks and, and Bitcoin, for example, were, were introduced, they were really intended to break down those walls, disintermediate and, and decentralize the uh, financial system and allow for uh, value to, to flow smoothly um, throughout the network. And so while that problem was initially uh, solved with the introduction of uh, chains like Bitcoin and the XRP ledger, um, as time went on and the number of blockchains continued to grow and you now have L1s, L2s, um, you know, Ethereum came on the scene and, and it just continues to proliferate, uh, it's almost as if we, we came 
almost full circle um, and that now we have new walls and, and new silos where liquidity gets trapped um, on, on each of these individual blockchains. So uh, interoperability and, and infrastructure like that of Axlar and, and Layer Zero is, is a great solution to that problem and it's finally going to allow for the transfer of, of value, so tokens moving between these individual uh, chains that all have their unique advantages and, and reason for attracting users, um, as well as information. So we're talking about token transportation on the dApps, on the DEX, um, right, but seamless uh, and at high velocity. And we're not just talking about some, you know, some deep Web3 guys playing in DeFi that need to bridge some tokens over to another pool so they you know they manually do it she's talking about uh enterprise at large e-commerce uh multiple different industries uh finance industries using platforms that have these cross-chain routers that can route smart liquidity to the xrp ledger decks right from multiple chains right the the cosmos ecosystem has over 200 chains attached to it Axelar has over 60 chains attached to it. We're talking about mass interoperability, mass usage of the DEX, right? And so that is exactly why I'm getting involved in the XRP Ledger's DeFi now, right? To, to educate and, and get some bumps and bruises first so I can be well positioned to handle the influx of capital coming into these pools from the institutional investors. And that is exactly what I posted yesterday on my uh, uh, X account, right? I don't get on X much, but I got on yesterday to show my excitement for uh, what was going on with MAG, right? And uh, here we go, uh, was that video from yesterday as MAG was taken off, right? And then I, uh, I posted from it, I said, what happens when the institutional investors who have pre-purchased XRP from Ripple in the early rounds start to add multi billions of dollars worth of XRP into the liquidity pools, adding to the total value locked. Right? We had a few people comment down below with some interesting thoughts. Uh, Jacqueline, if institutional investors started adding billions of dollars worth of XRP into the liquidity pools, it could significantly increase the TVL, which obviously that is exactly what would happen. Enhance liquidity reduce price volatility, potentially drive broader adoption of trust in the XRP-based DeFi platforms, which is exactly what we've been talking about, building trust with the DeFi service providers that are third party from Ripple, right? They're not literally teamed with Ripple, uh, but they are on the XRP ledger and they're building out. And it's important that, you know, they continue to build trust in this ecosystem, right? And so that was uh, during the pump. It actually pumped up way higher than this overnight, came back down. It's settling back down now in the 6,000 area. So, you know, with only 2,500 tokens, they're being burned. Uh, and with the brand, the long-term vision of the Magnetic Dex team, it's looking beautiful. And I am here for the long run. No matter what, I have a plan if it bottoms and falls out and goes to zero. I have a plan if we just trade sideways for a long time. I have a plan if we go up, up and away, right? I have a plan for everything. And I, and I would say, you know, that is the way that I'm approaching it right now because of the due diligence process I've put in. You guys are not new to my channel. You know, I'm all about due diligence and vetting the companies, vetting the projects, understanding what we're getting into, weighing my risk to reward factor, right? And that is exactly what we're here to do. Now, I want to cover one more thing. XRP Ledger is just building out some beautiful things. I found this one right here, Opulence X. They are actually introducing an innovative asset management solution powered by AI-driven robo-assistants, right? So now we're talking about AI designing portfolios, and it says it'll be used to uh, able to access diversified portfolio designed for effective risk management and optimizing returns. And so if we really look back and think about what David and Brad and the team have been talking about for the last few years, it's DeFi, 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 DeFi. I uh, posted again on my Twitter last night. Um, <clears throat> this right here. Where is it? Uh, my main focus now is to build a robust XRPL DeFi portfolio. And this was what really got me because I started to go back and really listen to, uh, you know, what the team had been saying for the past few months. Right. And here you see David Schwartz, 
from XRPL uh, Las Vegas, XRP Las Vegas was on stage and said, the liquidity providers are who we are hoping drive the adoption of the ecosystem. So we're at ground zero, guys, and it's up to us to educate ourselves to learn this uh, this uh, level of it, it, it's a completely different ball game than buy and hold, right? This is a uh, you are active, right? You're not as active as a day trader out here, you know, day trading on the screen all day, but it is active. You have to check in on your positions. You have to understand the risk to reward. You have to be willing to get on the roller coaster a little bit and get your sea legs, right? You have to be able to understand that this is a long-term business strategy portfolio, right? And, you know, you should have a well-balanced DeFi portfolio. You should not be 100% all in on these, you know, crazy APY plays, right? We want, we want stable coin pairs. We want Ripple. We want XRP backed with the RLUSD. We want RLUSD, USDC, multiple different pools that aren't going to be paying these crazy amount of fees but it is a solid play you have the trust of the xrp ledger blockchain it's not going anywhere um and like i said guys we had fun on this nice pump and you know it's more than likely this is going to be a pumping token for a long time on the xrp ledger it's going to correct it's going to pump it's going to correct it's going to pump hear me when i say it's going to correct it's going to correct get that really dialed in <clears throat> but remember it's gonna pump too i'll see you guys on the next one peace